chain link economics is focused on creating the various protocol improvements, the various um, incentives for user fees to efficiently flow into the system to increase the system's security. Because what you want is a virtuous cycle. You want a loop between more security, leads to more adoption, leads to more fees, leads to more security, leads to more adoption, leads to more fees. That virtuous cycle does depend on the market. It does depend on the amount of users willing to pay fees. It does depend on their willingness to pay for greater security. It does depend on the efficiency with which they can access the system and pay into it in a form that they find attractive. So I think that um, Economics 2.0 is trying to get us to that place. It's making various improvements gradually. But all of those improvements fundamentally depend on a market appearing for the security provided by the protocol or the services provided by the protocol whether the data services, computes per services, cross-chain services. In most cases, I think it'll be all services, all of those services combined and used by multiple applications at the same time. Um, right now, the market dynamic, the market level adoption is not in the millions of developers. It's not in the world of all the banks and all the asset managers and all the, all the Web2 systems on chain. That's the world economics 2.0 is being built for. In, in that world, you would have an efficient payment system that allows users, developers of the protocol to pay into the system however they like, in whatever form they like, their own token, native tokens, some other form of payment, cash payments, whatever payments. And for then that to be converted into the token of the system to create the necessary security for the system. So you can arrive at a kind of universal uh, billing universal payment system, universal payment token model, because that reduces the friction, that reduces the effort through which a developer has to go through to pay to the system. Chainlink, I think, is one of the only things that can do this because it can provide the price data. And eventually, I think a universal billing system, payment system, will even become a product of, of, of a kind for other protocols, because you do want to lower the friction that people have to go through to pay for anything, because then they pay more. And once again, the goal is to get as many fees into the system as possible. So those fees feed back into the security of the system. And then as long as you have a growing market and the, and the market values that security, that additional security should increase adoption, which should increase fees. So right now, I think what Economics 2.0 is doing is getting set up technically for that market uh, with a better payment system, universal um, gas token type system, universal billing system, I think there's a lot of uh, ways in which the 2.0 versions of data, of uh, various compute properties of Chainlink, of the cross-chain system will make it easier and easier for people to pay for incremental units, incremental units of security, incremental units of value from the system. And I think eventually you will arrive at a um, very efficient global market dynamic where you have the centralized computing market uh, which I mentioned at the end of my presentation this year at SmartCon. And the decentralized computing market is really where all of these other innovations of the Economics 2.0 system end up in, where any developer, Web3 developer, Web2 developer, TradFi Bank Capital Markets developer, can go to an interface and request decentralized data, decentralized connectivity, decentralized off-chain computation that can allow them to even interact with chains in efficient ways. And for them to get back the level of security that relates to their budget. So the thing that we found in talking with many users is that different protocols value security differently. And even the same protocol will value security differently at different times. So there could be a protocol that starts with a low assumption about security. But as the value in that protocol grows and or as the, the neighboring protocols experience security issues, their valuation of security goes higher, which means that even if they start on some homemade Oracle system or some other Oracle system, my belief is that as the successful protocol's value increases, they will always default back to the most secure, reliable system 
which in this world right now is Chainlink and will, uh, with the effort of our community and everyone else, hopefully be continue to be Chainlink. So the decentralized computing market should completely systematize and automate that interaction where any developer could show up and say, I value security this much for this data and this compute and this connectivity. Here's my budget for these three things and the security at being at level, level C level security, level three security, whatever, whatever we call it. Then um, they get more value into their protocol and their assumptions and valuation of security rises. So they come back to the marketplace and say, oops, guess what? I have more value in the system. I want to pay more for security. And the system, the chain link network, the decentralized computing marketplace should be able to very efficiently get them more node operators, get them more high quality data, get them more reliable, more uh, intensive AI models, get them more secure connectivity with more checks, more nodes, more, more whatever type of security they value. And that is really what everything's being built towards. Everything is being built towards this model of developers from web two, web three, capital markets, trade finance, gaming, insurance, ad networks, anything. Showing up, being able to easily define their security, define their data needs, define their compute needs, define their connectivity needs, and get that returned to them in an extremely efficient, reliable market where the best nodes earn more, where the best data providers earn more, where the best AI models that are that are run in Oracle networks earn more, where all of these things earn more because they're better. And the Chainlink system will have, and already has in some ways, but will continue to have a more and more robust reputation system for defining all of this and matching that budget for security and reliability and data quality and all these other properties with the computing provider that provides that in a decentralized, trust-minimized manner. And the current work on economics is getting everything set up for that. And the subsequent work, I think, will uh, drive it more and more towards that final goal. But that's really the end state I think we want to end up in, because that's the end state through which I see uh, developers being able to scale their application in a secure way, and the way I, in which I see this chain, the security that the Chainlink network provides, that CCIP provides, that validated data provides, being valued properly. Because then everybody's different valuation of security can be captured within the system, which is what you want. You want the maximum amount of fees because you want them then sent for the purposes of creating a maximum uh, increase in security, which then makes your system the most secure system. And in a, in a world of security sensitivity, that system continues to gain the, the majority of, of adoption, which, which continues the cycle more and more in, in that direction.